a nuclear bomb 206 times as powerful as the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima almost was detonated in North Carolina when a B-52 bomber crashed in 1961. The report goes on to talk about how basically, you know, as the pilot was doing some testing maneuvers, first of all, first question I asked myself is why was the pilot doing testing maneuvers with live nuclear weapons? But it was 1961, different time, different place. I'm not that upset. I, I, I can't say I'm not that upset, but I guess... I don't know. I have no explanation for that. I take that back. But either way, you know, after doing a couple of rounds of testing, the, the B-52 bomber actually, you know, had some mechanical failures and sort of crash landed. In the process of crash landing, these nuclear bombs almost, you know, they fell off. Now, now each these bombs are made of various triggers. So they have multiple layers of triggers. And the multiple layers of triggers sort of before the bomb goes off. Like, you know, one trigger goes through, then another trigger, then a third trigger, then a fourth. This bomb got so close that it was one trigger left from blowing the entire East Coast to an almost total oblivion. It's true. A 1969, a 1969 document outlines exactly how close the U.S. got to the third nuclear explosion in the populated area. The document was obtained by the Freedom of Information Act. Request concludes that one simple dyno... dyno dynamic technology of a low voltage switch stood between the united states and a major catastrophe that would have spread fatal amounts of fallout all the way to new york city now america i gotta tell you why we need nuclear safety in this country why we need to get just rid of nuclear chemical and biological weapons altogether is because of stuff like this and i mean yes this happened a couple years ago but just a couple weeks ago el assad just drop sarin gas on children. And he thought it was like a good idea. He's like, oh, we need to destroy the rebels, so let's just drop some sarin gas on children and kill them. We've got to do better as a world to make sure we live in a nuclear-free world, right? Because when you live in a world where there are nukes and you can have mistakes like what happened in 1961, but beyond that fact, we live in a world where if we ever got to a geopolitical situation that just never could de-escalate itself, we could literally be in a mutually assured destruction. The whole world could implode on itself because of nuclear weapons. And let me tell you how easy this happens, folks. Just like this 1961 bombing. Put that into 2012, 2013. A situation where Pakistan and India, which is the most likely scenario of nuclear war, I would argue. Um, people say the most likely scenario, like the likely most likely scenario of nuclear war, war carried out by sovereign states. In a situation where Pakistan, which we already know the geopolitical climate in that particular region is a tricky one. Pakistan or a rogue leader, a member of Al-Qaeda gets hold of a nuclear bomb that was made in Pakistan or near Pakistan. They launch this nuclear weapon. India, not knowing if it came, really truly came from Pakistan, launches a nuclear weapon in response to that. And then China, because India launched a nuclear weapon, launches a nuclear weapon in, in response to the fact that, that India launched a nuclear weapon. And Russia launches because like, well, everybody else is launching a weapon, so we're going to launch a weapon too. And then the United States launches a weapon because we're like, well, Russia just launched a weapon. And before you know it, we are in a mutually assured, destructive world. All because we live in this time and period where we're not only, not only do we have nuclear weapons, but we have nuclear weapons of what we call hair trigger alert. Very similar to this B-52 bombing story, nuclear weapons that can easily be detonated or they're on, sitting on the rocket launcher ready to go. And therein lies the problem. So not only do we need to de-alert our nuclear weapons, it's a long, I've been talking about de-alerting weapons for years. People think I'm crazy when I talk about it, but it's true. But beyond de-alerting weapons, we just need to ban nuclear weapons. We need a complete and total ban of nuclear weapons in our time, in our lifetime.